guys, Minx here. We're going back up to where we saw the uh, the model, in a hope that we don't horribly die. In fact, we actually are back up where we saw the model. I'm just a fucking idiot. Don't worry about me. Did I see some green text there? I hope not. The phantoms everywhere thing is a little bit exhausting, but we'll see how things go, I guess. Welcome back to some more Corpse Body Blood Drive, by the way. I forgot to say that! Hello, you. So hungry, so hungry. I'm afraid I don't have any food on me. Well, that was useful. That was fucking useful, wasn't it? That was fucking great. Absolutely great. Can I talk to you again? Do we have to find some food? Do I need to be Yashiki? Let's try Yashiki. Hang on. You do have some food on you. I'm pretty fucking sure you have like a donut thing, right? You have your favourite food. I'm pretty sure you had your favourite food. Oh no, it resets every chapter? Are you fucking kidding me? Hmm. Huh. Okay, well, I guess we're, we're just going to have to explore and see if we can find some uh, some more stuff somewhere. Let's have a look around, shall we? There's going to be... I need to find one of those. I think they're strawberry buns that she has. I think she likes those, right? And give it to that ghost. So if we see a spirit, we've got to hide in closets and shit to get away with it, I think. I'm pretty sure we don't have anything to defend ourselves now from what I just saw, so... You know, that's going to be fucking shite and a half, isn't it? I guess we'll just start checking out these, uh, these classrooms on this floor. See if we can find something. Batteries, great. Where? He's not here, but where? Okay, I have nothing to give her at the moment either, right? So the spirit's trying to find something. Okay, let's do. Oh, fuck. That's oh, okay. We'll just uh, we'll just drop a save quickly and heal up to full again. Kind of handy mechanic that, really. I guess we're, this game's going to have us repeatedly looking through areas to try and find stuff that we need. Although this room looks completely empty. Yeah, fuck this. But that said, there's the cabinets and stuff, isn't there? There is the cabinets and stuff to find. Let me see if I can... God, I hate having to fucking make my way around all the horrible shit on the floor. What have I got? I guess we burn this away. Jesus! I'm, I'm sorry, cabinet. 
The hair immediately catches fire and burns it up in one giant, rather foul-smelling fireball. I got a bird corpse. Well, that's ni nice, I guess. Um, I, 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 I guess that's nice. Okay. That door's fucking closed, isn't it? I wonder if the person was looking for the dead bird? I g possibly, I guess? I've no idea. I guess we'll have to go and have a look around. I don't like these fucking loading screens in this game, by the way. They're fucking... I need to be careful with my sprint as well. Should we see if this ghost wants a fucking dead bird? Hello, ghost. Would you would you like a? Should we give him the dead bird? I just try. Oh, oh, maybe. Please don't kill me. Ah, it's cheapers. Thank you. Cheapers and I used to eat this together every day. Please take some as a sign of my gratitude. Right, okay. Now we've got the strawberry milk bun to give to that dude in the stalls. And hopefully this will all come full. This actually worked out pretty well. Cheapers. I was a little budgie. He used to come every day and eat packed lunch with her. And now he's fucking dead! Just like everyone else in your fucking life! Did I check this cub at this one out? Fuck it, let's just go up. We, we, we know we got the bun. Although... I haven't got any fucking talismans, so if a ghost shows up, I'm kind of fucked. Anyways, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully we'll find one, I guess. We have a lovely, delicious bun for you. I'm not talking about Ayumi's buns, because that would be really fucking disturbing. How old are the characters in this? Like, 15, 16, I'm guessing? I don't know, because you isn't you could like 15, and these, I don't know. So hungry. Come to think of it, I do have that strawberry milk bun with me. Give milk bun. Thank you, now I don't have to search for food. Spirit left something behind. Music room key obtained. Okay, well that's progress. He was having a shit like everyone else in the Corpse Party universe ever. We'll drop a save here. Yeah, I'm very concerned about the phantom things in this game. The fact that they seem to indefinitely chase you forever. There's got to be better ways of dealing with them. I'm guessing I'm not hiding enough, like I said before, but... I don't know. She just get really tight. Like, she's fucking dropping her lung! It's like, are you fucking... You're a chain smoker, are you me? Are you fucking... Do you have a problem? Do you have a smoking problem, are you me? Is there something you want to tell the fucking rest of the fucking class? I don't actually know where I'm going now. I think... I don't know where the music room is. I guess I'll just go in all the rooms and see if there's any loot in all of them. I guess that makes sense. Some fat loots. Oh. Get rid of that tripwire, piece of shit. So is this different, co different corpses? I guess that the excuse is that these are the different spaces and stuff, but... Yeah, this is a different room. Likely bled out internal trauma due to innumerable sewing pins stabbed into the body. It resembles porcupine. That's my favourite animal in the whole wide world. 
What else do we have here? Okay, let's check the cabinet. Now we know that items can be hidden, I think it's pretty important to check every sort of like place in each room. Yeah. Talisman! Yes! That's what we fucking needed. Don't care about that. Moths, not not happy about that. This room is like fucking horrible. I can't actually remember what the music room is. Is it even in this part of the school? Have we been anywhere near it? Because I don't fucking know. Oh, wait, my talisman just killed that phantom. Fuck! I'm using them quite easily. This should be in the infirmary, right? Bandages. Uh, let's not read the diary. Or let's save and then read the diary. Okay, so we can use a cure darkening, which we don't really need to do at the moment. Although we just lost our last fucking talisman all over again. <sighs> let's save in different slot. Okay, let's read it. The journal lists daily records of Tachiko's growth and development, all presented with an abnormally high level of detail. Flipping through the pages is one that immediately catches my attention. During a standard school physical, a strange shadow showed up in an x-ray taken of Tachiko's body. We had no idea what it was, and Tachiko was terrified, but it had to be removed, and that required surgery. It turned out to be Sachi's teeth, and when you're a little girl with teeth stuck in your body, people treat you like some kind of devil. It took quite a toll on us both. Okay, well that's pretty fucked up. But interesting nonetheless. Okay. Guess we're just gonna keep heading south? I don't fucking know. I guess this is the right way. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to check out everywhere, I guess. I mean, there's no reason to, like, uh, you know, to not explore everywhere. I'm going to check the entrance. Where is everything useful here? Probably something bum, I'm guessing, though. Please be a talisman here. I really need a talisman right now. I do want to run. Did I get the body? Okay, star due to mobility of the dislocation of limbs. Fuck, run! Fucking fuck! There's a cabinet up here, right? Please don't kill me. Please fuck off. Does blue mean they're right outside? I think it does, right? Let's just stay in here forever. Is blue good? Oh, we're gonna... Don't go that way. I think is the key answer. Someone told me that he can move desk. I don't know if this is like... Oh, okay, apparently he can. This time I'm going to have to do some lifting here if you want to get over to the other building. Jesus! There. Alright, now we can get through. Awesome. Okay. Oh god, what's going on now? Cutscene. Okay, that's where they want us to go. Look, over there, Kishinuma, one of the pillars of the six demons is here. It has to be. And we don't have a talisman. How do you know that?
Just look, the stun I got from Misoto is reacting to something. Okay, we haven't saved for a while, so before we do that, let's see there's a save point down here. Oh, this is like the two joint... Oh, there is two buildings, right? Yeah, there is. Um, and we just got access to the second one. Okay, let's save again. Let's see if there's a talisman in this room as well before we do anything else. You think that's a good thing to do? I think that's a sensible... Uh, there's nothing that appears to be like fucking... You know what I mean? I, d I don't want to go too far in. Alright, let's go. Let's see if I can do the fucking pillar. Right? We'll see how bad it goes. Alright, Amy. We gotta deal with the first of these fucking pillars. I believe in you, Amy. I believe in you. Yow, it's really coming down. Who the fuck says Yow? Yow? When I came here before, I was attacked by the ghost of that statue girl, and Aiko's body burst into flames. Holy crap. You serious? That's messed up. You know this. We had a conversation about it, you fucking idiot. Can a person survive something like that? Stop. Don't even say that. S sorry. Alright, first of all, Bonnie. Fell out window while running from Black Shadow. Um, that's racist. And they probably deserve to die. Hmm. Hmm. So where's this fucking pillar of doom? Oh, okay, I guess it's that. Hmm. It's not a pillar, it's a statue of a wolf. There's something in its mouth. Oh god, this is bad, right? Whoa, what the hell are you... My finger is just barely touching some kind of rock. Why would you just stick your hand in there? That thing could easily be a trap. They'll lop it right off. Come on, don't be an idiot. Leave it alone. Ah. Shinazaki, get out of there. The hole goes even deeper. Just give me a second. She's so dead. Huh? Well, she's not dead. She's a main character. I raced as far as I could go. My whole left arm was now inside the statue. Kishinuma was clearly... Ver Did they just move? Was very uneasy about this. But he had every right to, especially given what he'd just seen the statue that I completely missed. Stop, Ayumi. Hey! Hey! What? Just give me a second. Shinazaki, get your arm out of there now. The thing's moving. Huh? Please get your arm out. You dumbass! Ah! Did I say that? Well, compromising position or what? 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 Stop! I don't want this! Jesus. What the hell are you saying? Your arm was a split second away from being bitten off! What? I looked back at the statue and sure enough the wolf's mouth was now firmly closed, its eyes glaring menacingly at me. <clears throat> so, we were basically right? I'm sorry. God damn, well at least you still got your arm. Hmm. What's that in your hand? Huh? A crystal. It's the crystal from this pillar. Yeah, that's about what it looks like. We stared at the pillar's crystal for some time, studying it. For us, it represented a rare success in this school, where abject failure was the norm. See? I told you there was something in there. You just got lucky. Oh, come on! It doesn't matter, you're safe. That's what's important. Justice obtained. Because I managed to get the crystal with my arm intact, the danger I'd barely escaped didn't feel quite as real as I could. Quite as real. I could only regard this as a victory, and was reveling in it. Kishinuma was still sour for a bit, but he quickly warmed up to the situation and let out a small laugh. Or maybe the night air had just gotten to him. Oh, what's that? I got a... I wonder what the key is to. Hmm, there's something written on it. Paul Pumperum. Pump from Kyoto. Oh god, the fucking Paul. The fucking Paul from the first game. Well, it's not actually the first game, but the fucking Paul from the first PSP game. Achoo! 
Damn it, we got drenched out here. Here, look, Kishinuma. There's a towel. It's all covered in dust, though, isn't it? No, surprisingly clean. Here, you can have the first wipe. And that's when they realized the towel was possessed. Huh? What's wrong? After you dry yourself off, give it to me. My hair's a mop right now. Oh, okay. Sure. What did I think she wanted me to wipe her down with it? What the hell's wrong with me? Got a bit of a fetish there, huh? That's okay. That's okay. I'm not gonna judge you. You towel fetish weirdo. Okay. Right. I guess we are now in the new building. I don't know if we should be looking around here or not, but oh, whatever. We just will keep going and see what happens. Oh, these are fucking toilets. Oh, fuck this. Fuck you and your obsession with fucking toilets here. Okay, just keep going. We haven't run into any more traps and stuff here. I'm definitely very aware... Oh god, do we do up or down? Oh, we're in the same building the other guys are right now. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Okay. This should probably be a toilet, but... I guess we should check it for shinies. I guess I should de de technically check all the stalls, because if I don't, I might miss something. Oh god. <laughs> A name tag rests beside the corpse. In a go car girls high class 3-3, Remy Yamuchi. Hang self in bathroom after going mad running from vengeful spirit. That's lovely. Yeah, I don't need to look in there again, do we? Uh, more creepy shit. Oh. Battery is obtained. Awesome. Hmm. Maybe I should start from the bottom and whip myself up. I don't want to go too far ahead of myself. Huh. Fuck. This is bad. This is really bad. I've got nowhere to fucking hide either, right? Yeah, he's gonna just chase me. They chase you fucking indefinitely, which is the real fucking problem, and I don't have a fucking talisman, because I keep losing them like a fucking idiot. Oh, fuck's sake. Right, save here again. Did I get rid of him? I guess that killed him using the save point? It didn't work before, but I am totally okay with that working now. I am totally okay with that working now. Uh, we're gonna use some batteries because my light's flickering and it's irritating the fuck out of me. Okay, we did it. We beat that phantom, kind of, technically. You know what I mean? Y you know? Now, where the fuck are we now? Oh, we have the music room key too, right? Ah, oh, this is... This is the music room. Does that mean that creepy dude who went mental is going to be around here somewhere? Major's Guild Grunt. What? 
Most likely to come to FP. Last words were, I'll work till I die. I, I guess that's a reference to another game? There's nothing else. Is that shiny? It's the fucking creepy pictures. Yeah, fuck it. Nothing else in here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Anything in here? Nope. Am I just going round in fucking circles right now? Are we meant to be looking for that dude though? The one, other one that went ape shit? Is that the reason we're here? You know, because he went crazy in this area, right? I think? Oh. Yeah, this is definitely where he went ape shit. Charm is reacting to something. Okay, so we're near. Oh, f running, running. Don't know where I'm running. This door, please work. That was a really bad idea, probably going in this door. I just realised, but you know, hopefully we can get around him. He's still coming. Please be a talisman. Please be a talisman or something. Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you! Ha! Fucking prick! That was fucking lucky. That's another one over there, right? Is that another ghost? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm pretty sure that's another ghost just chilling down there. I guess we'll find out if I instantly do. That's such bullshit! He doesn't seem to be able to chase me though, which is... which is kind of weird. Fuck this room. I don't really... I, think, I don't think I need to cure darkening. I haven't actually got hit. Now, this is where the guy went crazy though, so let's, I guess, head this way and see if anything totally fucking horrible happens. Is that something? Yeah, there's something shining over there. I don't want bandages or batteries or any of that shit, really. Oh, we're going to the closet where everything went fucking crazy before. Oh, I'm taking it. Oh, it's only it's a normal one. It's a normal one, which sucks, but it's not like. Okay, now I can cut open the tentacles, right? Hang on, let's just try this. See if it fucks off. See if it, just hide in here to let's see if it fucks off. Please fuck off. Please. Is blue, blue, blue and green are good? I'm guessing. Okay, that they fucked off. Good. We're using the closets more effectively now. Kind of annoyed about that phantom in the fucking other room, though. That's like you can't. What's the point in that room? Uh This is gonna be another one of those fucking things, right? Cause she said something was nearby. The visible ends of each tentacle are sliced off completely, and what's left immediately withdraws into the room, freeing the door to open. What the hell's going on in here? 
Some kind of black magic, maybe? It gives me the creeps, whatever it is. There was an enormous jet black tree sprouting from the middle of the classroom. Damn, that sure wasn't something like that in here last time round. This isn't some heavenly host. It was. It was. This isn't the same heavenly host it was last time round. We can't rely on what we know from before. But this, this isn't like any pillar I've ever seen. It's. It's a tree. Ah, what the fuck is going on? Why is everyone so on edge? I mean, I. I can't. Damn it! Don't scare me like that. Right. Before we touch the tree, I'm going to save again because I'm paranoid. And if I do die, you know. Okay, let's try this. Good luck, everyone. Well, good luck, me. Good luck, everyone watching. I don't sense this is going to go particularly well. At the base of the tree, among all the split roots, there was a wooden plate displaying words written in what looked more like red paint than blood. Someone to come. Someone is here. They're here. Here, here, here! So what do you do with them? <laughs> when we take our next trophy, I hope soon. And how shall we kill them this time? <laughs> Laving humans, I hate them so. Lifeblood is detestable. Oh, how I hate them all. I must snuff them out. The murmurings of vengeful spirits could be heard all around us. And mixed in with them was a dull tone that resonated through my body, like ringing ears. What the... this does not feel right. Kishinua must have heard it too, based on his reaction. All the colour had drained from his face. Like a record player, needle skipping, the faint unpleasant tone continued to repeat over and over, echoing within us. I felt like if I stayed any longer than that, I had I had to, my head would burst. I was hyperventilating. Hey, where are we? This is a classroom, right? All we can be sure of is it isn't the world we know. <gasps> Both of us were trembling, and even Kishinima's breathing had become erratic. The trepidation that rocked us down to our cause was something that couldn't even truly be described. If you haven't felt it, and I pray you haven't, you'd never understand. Part of it, most of it, probably was due to the fact that we were literally standing in a place that operated on its own logic. Nothing we'd ever learned or experienced applied. I focused my attention back onto the wooden plate by the roots. There was a charm hanging from it, fashioned out of a wooden plank, bound with thin rope. The rope was looped over its surface into a perfectly patterned mesh, giving it texture that looked much like a bird's feather or a bee's nest at first glance. What is that? An Indian charm. Oh, that's what it looks like. What the fuck? I didn't press thing! Oh, shit. My breasts were coming in short, choppy, but... It's, this is scrolling without me doing anything. I don't know what the fuck's going on. What the fuck? Whoa! I'm dead. I'm dead. I quickly pulled up my arm and looked at the spot where the ghost had touched me. It turned purplish-red. My legs then began to shake and I fell to my knees. I've got a wrong end, guys. Unable to keep my balance, the pain in my arm was unbearable and the skin was beginning to bubble and produce a noxious odour. The taint skin liquefied completely and slid off my body. I was rotting and falling apart at an alarming rate. I could feel shots of agony from every single nerve ending in my body and my knees were soaked with urine. I could hold it in no longer. On top of it, the putrid smell of my own rapidly decomposing body was beginning to numb my brain, preventing me from fighting back in any way. This is fucked. Once the corrosion had reached my throat, my vision began to run and my head felt like it was about to snap off under its own weight. Then, before losing my ability to see entirely, something peculiar happened. The world began spinning around me and the floor was growing closer and closer. Thud. Just before losing consciousness, the world stopped spinning and I could barely make out one final image of my own headless, blackened body falling apart. So yeah, don't get hit by those ghosts, I think is the uh, is the thing here. So I, I've got to manage to... I've got to avoid all of them. If I hadn't had that fucking sign, I would have been fine. Oh, 
I'm just gonna stand still. Oh my fucking god. Is this the pillar's crystal? It's beautiful. I feel like warm water is streaming out of it and coursing through my body. That's just you pissing yourself. Seriously. Oh my god. Okay, so I can tell you now, I had like five goes at that and you were just meant to stand the fuck still. Something in the hole. I got a gym key. Oh, I know where that is. Okay, we're going to the gym, I guess. Gym, gym, gym. It's quite a long way, so we're going to probably jump ahead here until we actually get to the gym. So, uh, keep watching. Okay, guys, I'm pretty sure the gym is up here. I'm very worried about phantoms. I do not have any way of stopping them. No talisman or anything like that at the moment. I feel like I... Oh my god, that was fucking... There was one right there. The charm is reacting to something. It's going to be straight going for me, that thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the gym. Holy shit. It's open. You ready? Please don't interfere in whatever's in here. I did save on the way, so I guess I saved recently. Um, fuck. What the fuck is in the gym? It's another one of the pillars though, we're ticking off here. I feel like I've seen this place before. Really? The last time we came here, I don't remember there being a gym. I don't think there was. Yeah, I guess you're right. So what the hell is this? Oh, that looks shit to me. It looks like a giant white poo. It looks like... Stop right there. He's thinking what I'm thinking. <clears throat> you were going to say something disgusting, weren't you? What do you mean? Doesn't it look like soft serve ice cream to you? That's my sister's favourite food! Oh, so your sister's really into ice cream then? I'm really into anal sex. Way too much. She even eats it in winter. Me, I just get cold, just watching her. Right, okay. This is obviously some kind of horrific booby trap. Kishinuma, look up there! It's the thing we need. That has to be where the crystal is. I'll see if I can climb up it. Climb it? Come on, you got to be kidding me! What? You don't think I can? <laughs> I may not look it, but I was an expert tree climber when I was a kid, you know? And the pillar's really solid, see? So this'll be a piece of cake. Still, I... Fine, I can give you the boost on my shoulders if you want. Make it easier to get started. Me? On your shoulders? I wasn't sure I liked this idea, and my expression made those misgivings blatantly clear to Kishinuma. What's with your face? Just be stepping up on my shoulders so we can reach the ledge. Nothing to it, right? Alright. Sigh. She's worried she you're going to see her vagina. And that isn't what I meant by boost up. You good? That's like one step. That's where I just started anyway. Yeah, let's do this. Copyright. Okay. I'm going to take this very slowly. People said that I should save my sprint for some of the pillars. I'm guessing this is like a monster or a giant poo ghost and it's going to come alive and I'm going to have to like run down it or some shit or fight it maybe like in a mini boss battle or... I guess we'll see. Uh, got it. I got the crystal. Yes, alright, come on down. Okay. This is bad, right? Kishinima looked at me, but quickly diverted his eyes when he realised he could only see up my skirt. He could easily see up my skirt. And only. Still, nothing from Aiko or Masita, huh? Aiko's dead. Eek! I let out a loud shriek, grabbing Kishinuma's attention. Not it mattered, giving our relative positions. What happened? Great. Human hands! 
There are human hands inside this pillar. There are lots of people trapped inside this pillar. All of a sudden, I was surrounded by body parts with hands and strands of hair compromising the bulk of them. Get ready to run. And then from out the blue, sickeningly cheerful carnival music began blaring from over the gym with loudspeakers, volume up so high as to unpleasantly distort the sound. It was almost like an old record playing from a phonograph. Coupled with the corpses now littering my path, the music was even more unsettling than it would have been to begin with. Yeah! What? I'm sinking! I was quickly losing my footing as the formerly solid pillar began breaking down into a porous, almost sound-like substance. Shinazaki, get down! Hurry! Come on, I can do this. Did I make it? Kishinima grabbed into my arm and tried to pull me free from the object. But with its depths, there was a little girl with black eyes, and she was staring right at us. It's her! Am I fucked? The sight was unnerving, but he didn't flinch for long. He continued pulling desperately, trying to free me from becoming part of this pillar's makeup. Ah! Did he save me? Yes! I did it. Fucking did it. <sighs> the hell was that? You okay? Yeah. Let's just get out of here. Now. Where that phantom directly standing is. I want to go back in, because I actually missed a crowbar before. Oh, fucking hell. Shut up. What the hell? This music's driving me crazy! What? It's driving me crazy! Same here! Let's head back to the school! We're in the school, you fucking idiots! So what about the crystal? Were you able to get it? Yeah, here. Yeah. And we're going back in there. This is the Pillar's Crystal. Victory. The, that fountain was right there. Oh, and we got a cutscene after this. Kisaragi Academy, Class 2-9, just prior to morning homeroom. I entered the classroom, school bag in hand, and beeline directly for Naomi. From the look on her face, she'd been waiting for me. Morning, Satoshi. Good morning, Naomi. How'd it go at Shinazaki's? I mean, not good. Naomi shook her head. I did go, but her parents said she hasn't been home since the day before yesterday. So what now? Something is definitely not right. Her voice quivered. No doubt memories of our time in Heavenly Host were resurfacing for her, just as they had been for me. And my news was no better, unfortunately. Same story with Yoshiki. According to his neighbour, there hasn't been a single sound coming from his apartment since yesterday, which means he probably never went home last night. God, I don't want to hear that. I'm sick and tired of this. I don't, I don't want to lose any more friends. They made her face completely buried in her hands at this point. Damn it, I... I think you should know that Yoshiki was really worried about Shinazaki. He said she was in danger and it had to do with Heavenly Host. But that place shouldn't exist anymore. Yoshiki and Shinazaki? What the hell could those guys have possibly gotten yourselves into? In my worry, I did what I often do when trying to clear my mind and looked out the window, staring into the cloudy sky. And suddenly, there it was again. What is that? There was a solid black spherical object hovering in front of the sky. That was the worst botching of a sentence I've done. Hovering in the sky. You see it too, right Naomi? Yeah, what is it? Machida. Nakashima, please refrain from looking outside during school hours. Morning homeroom is about to begin. Please refrain from looking directly at nature in school. A homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, entered the classroom with his usual air of authority. Miss Nero is out sick today, so third period English will be study hall. Come on, you two. Get back to your seats. What are you looking at that there anyway? How dare you look out the fucking windows? Did you know this is a classroom? You shouldn't be doing any looking whatsoever. You stupid little cunts. Mr. Yamazaki, can't you see it too? The black thing? Hmm? <gasps> what is that? I guess they can all see it. I thought it was just them suffering from, like, joint hallucinations. If even the teacher was startled by this, it must be juicy. So all the other students seemed to think, as they began to murmur noisily and get up to see for themselves. Whoa! What? What is that? God! That's creepy! It's a natural disaster! You think the big one's coming? Now, now everyone, calm down. Panicking will do us no good. Mr. Yamazaki, I say we end class early. 
Don't be absurd. If there's an emergency, we'd get a call about it. And if that happens and school's dismissed, then you may go. Right now, the best thing to do is return to your seats. And girls, please don't stand on the desks. The boys can see everything. Eek! Woo! <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck is this game of... You pervs. Come on, seriously? Naomi and I looked one another in the eye. We were both thinking the same thing. Satoshi, I don't like this. Yeah, I've got a bad feeling about it myself. This chill in the air, it's exactly the same as in Heavenly Host. In your seats, that means you. After class has ended, we took a trip to Polonia Academy High School. We needed something to go on, some kind of clue. Anything at all, really. So we just started asking around. Eventually, we encountered the girl who was crying profusely about some friends of hers who'd gone missing. They all just disappeared and... <laughs> Mio, right? Were, your f were you friends with Naho Sonoki and Aiko Niwa? Yeah, Sayaka and I were really close with them. And they always tease us. I'm sorry. The entire time Mio spoke with us, she tr was trying to rub the tears from her eyes. And each time she attempted, it made her ponytail twitch. What's going on anyway? Where did they all go? And what's that black thing? It's my dick. <laughs> We fleshed after our escape, not to burden others unnecessarily with the information about Heavenly Host, feeling that most people were simply better off not knowing. If you're looking into info about Naho and the others, then something scary must be going on. Right? Well, uh... I don't need any details. I know I may have to help, even if you told me, but please... Please save them from whatever it is. She was actually grabbing my shirt now, and the tears were pouring from her eyes all over again. Wherever they are, they're probably in a lot of pain. Aiko Niwa, the girl we met at Makina Shinazaki's apartment. She'd seemed calm and confident, even a little full of herself. But somewhere deep down I felt there was a chink in her armour, and I think Naomi had felt it too. To be honest, even we're not sure exactly what's going on, but if we figure anything out, we'll make a point to come back and let you know. Mia rubbed her eyes again, her ponytail perking up once more, and looked at us with big, wet saucers. Out of options, we elected to retry the Sachiko in Ever After Ritual. That was our method. Why is it fucking skipping? That's so fucking annoying. So the ritual just failed. They tried to do it. Looks like the curse of Heavenly Host has been cleared after all. Seems like it. With no Sachiko anymore, that whole school should have been totally destroyed. <sighs> and bought a man of water and calorie biscuits to bring with us. I padded my bags, as if demonstrating to Naomi how much was in it. You should be bringing masses of army bags. It should have been fairly obvious, though, as the bag itself was practically bursting at the seams. Helicopters flew by overhead, no doubt in response to the mysterious black orb that appeared in our sky. We watched a flurry of activity above us as we glumly left Polonia Academy High School, no closer to any answers than we were before. Glancing over at Naomi, I saw the sour expression on her face, and tried to imagine why she didn't want to go back home. And it wasn't hard to think of numerous reasons, number one being her mother wanting to kill her. Hey Naomi! Are you going to stay with Miss Niwa again tonight? Yeah. Okay. Well, would you like to stop by my house again first? My mum, and Yuka too, of course, seem to have really taken a liking to you. Are you sure you don't mind? Her expression instantly, measurably brightened. I don't mind at all. In fact, I'd appreciate it. Yuka could stand some cheering up herself. She's peeing everywhere again. Thank you. We shifted directions and began the relatively short floor foot trek to my house. It was an ordinary and rather pleasant walk for a while, until Naomi caught sight of her mother turning the corner up ahead. At the time, I didn't realise that's who it was. She was clasping the arm of a young man sporting a shaved head and a construction outfit, with some sort of insignia emblazoned on the back of his uniform. Mom? She was clearly very close to this man, cuddling up to him as they walked, pulling his arm into her bosom and even sneaking a few kisses before the pair disappeared down the alleyway. Huh. What's wrong, Naomi? It's nothing. Nothing at all! The voice had gone up a full octave as she said this. Clearly something was indeed bothering her, but I had no way to know what it was at the moment, and could only take her at her word. And her word was, by all appearances, that everything was fine. She'd more or less closed herself off outwardly, pretending not to have seen a thing. I guess we're going back to school? Nope, we're not. As we drew closer to my house, we slowly began to see a strange light illuminating the area around it. And the area was different than what it had looked like this morning. 
To say the least, there was now a bamboo wall surrounding my home, and most notably, we now had a hot spring. Uh, what words are there for situations like this? Flummoxed, maybe? This wasn't here this morning. What the hell is Machida Springs? Calm down, Satoshi. Let's just go inside and see. Immediately upon opening my front door, however, we were greeted by a sign reading, This way to the natural springs. Uh... The Ministry of Defense plans to issue a statement at 1800 hours regarding the massive black orb that's appeared in the skies over Tokyo. We entered the dressing room, only to find Yuka naked. Well, she's not naked. Oh, welcome home, big brother and Naomi! The water's great! Yuka! Yuka was holding a toy goldfish, a towel, and a small beach ball in her hands. What the... What are you doing? That's not the question I should have asked, but it was in too much... I was in too much shock for my words to come out the way I meant them to. And Yuka didn't seem to mind. She just smiled back at me as joyful as I'd ever seen her. Come on! Come on! It's amazing! Grabbing one of, e one of each of our hands, she slid open the glass door in the back that led us into Machida Springs proper that we'd just been hearing so much about. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, bro. Gotta say this one's sweet psych. There was another girl already soaking in the springs. A young girl around Yuka's age sporting a stylish hairdo. Huh? Don't tell me you've never met her before. She's a friend from class. Her name's Satsuki Mizuhara. Nice to meet you, bro. Now you'd be sure to keep your eyes up high, okay? Not that I expect you to be too turned on by these raisins of mine. Ah ha ha! Boingy boingy boingy! <laughs> what the hell? Hey, stop jiggling them! It was official. Nothing made sense anymore. When the hell is going on round here? Hang in there, Satoshi! Naomi had grabbed hold of my shoulders as if to keep me upright in case I'd suddenly decided to faint, which all things considered was probably a sensible precaution. Hee <laughs> hee! Isn't this wonderful? Miss Kwan? It's good for your health, plus sulfur springs help ward off evil spirits, so it's win-win! I asked them to have everything built by noon, and as you can see, they delivered. My company's construction division is quite resourceful, wouldn't you say? How can you do something like this without even asking permission first? I pointed my finger at her in an accusatory manner, as was the style at the time. Well now, welcome home, Satoshi, and the same to you, Naomi. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. Hope I'm not intruding. Suddenly I found myself shuddering down to my core as my mum appeared before us, wearing nothing but a bath towel. Mum? Her skin was bright pink and she seemed to be in very high spirits. By the looks of things, she was in the spring herself until just a few moments before we arrived, when she'd evidently stepped out the kitchen to get a very large number of beverages. Um, if you're going to go back into your house to get drinks, shouldn't we at least wipe yourself down at first? You're sopping wet. Yeah, sure. Anyway, everyone, grab a drink. Yay! <laughs> you're the best, Yuka Mom. Yuka and Satsuki were also in very high spirits. Oh. As was Miss Kwan. Hey, what'd you say we take a group photo? A commemoration of the establishment of Machida Springs. Here, everyone, line up. Yeah, just like that. Now say cheese. Cheese. Jesus. Cheese. No, we I were forced into the frame as well, like it or not. We were now a party to this madness. What the fuck is going on? Ha ha ha! Our eyes were basically pinpricks at this point. None of this seemed even remotely real, and neither Naomi nor I had any idea how to react to it. I took the drink my mum handed to me, and with even, without even checking what it was, I chugged down a few gulps. I was thirstier than I thought, apparently. What the hell? What flavour is this? There was a white, thick liquid taste inside the milk bottle I was given. It had a faint tint to it when viewed under the right light, but like the flavour, I couldn't quite identify it. This colour, is this fruit flavoured milk? I turned the bottle to read the label. Apparently, it was Niwa flavoured. Miss Kwan, I can't thank you enough for the building, this lovely hot spring on our property. You're welcome. Here, any time you'd like. Here, it's a spare key to the house. Oh, Mrs. Machida, I don't know what to say. Mom, are you certain it's alright for me to have this? Of course. There wouldn't be Machida Springs if it weren't for you, after all. Far as I'm concerned, you've got a one-year free pass. Mom, What the fuck is happening? This is like some ass 
acid trip in video game form, and I fucking love it. That night, I found myself tossing and turning in my futon. I just couldn't get to sleep for the life of me, so I tossed the covers aside and got up. Might as well go for a dip. This had been the craziest day I could recall, in this world anyway. After all, the commotion had died down and our many guests had departed. Dad had come home and predictably he was in the springs right away with a carafe of his favourite sake. I had a hard time justifying Miss Kwan's arbitrary actions, not to mention my family's utter willingness to accept them. But in the end, I had to admit the hot spring was pretty nice. The rest of my family were all still sleeping, so the house was dead silent. I took off my clothes in the dressing room and slid open the glass doors. And there, sitting on the edge of the spring, completely uncovered, was Miss Kwan. My face instantly turned bright red. She was a fairly attractive woman after all, so being alone with her like this was kind of exciting. Though looking at her now, entirely exposed as she was, revealed to me the shapely woman wasn't quite as shapely as I assumed. Her body was abnormally, worryingly thin. She was a definition of gaunt, looking every bit the part of an infirmed elderly woman from the neck down. I could have sworn I caught a slight glint from the corners of her eyes. She didn't seem to notice me, so I was half-tempered to slide the door closed and pretend none of this had ever happened. But no, I had to come clean. Miss Kwan? <sighs> oh, Satoshi! <laughs> Despite the fact that I was a much younger man, and her student no less, she made absolutely no effort to hide her nakedness. In fact, she was actually a little excited to be seen this way. Were you in our bath at this hour? Aha, uh -huh, sorry. Did I wake you? No, that's not what I... Never mind, where's Naomi? She's sleeping soundly at my home. I called her family again today, and her mother seems to have calmed down quite a bit. That's good to hear. I was legitimately relieved. But I was also having trouble concentrating on the conversation. It took every ounce of focus I had to avert my eyes from the things I knew I shouldn't be staring at. Um, could you cover yourself, Miss Kwan? Huh? Oh dear! <laughs> my apologies. She immediately got up from her spot and dunked herself in the water up to her neck. Due to its mineral content, it was a very effective means of at least partially obscuring her body. What about you? Aren't you cold? Just standing there like that? You should get in as well. Huh? Ah! I panicked at the realisation that I was completely naked right now. I covered myself with my hands and could feel the blood rushing to my face, turning me what I quite certain must have been an incredible shade of red. Recovering as best I could from the embarrassment, I stepped into the water, choosing my spot carefully so as to put some distance between myself and Miss Kwan. Were you crying just now, Miss Kwan? I just had this strange feeling you were. If not, then I'm sorry to have asked such a weird question. Heh, <laughs> actually I was pondering, thinking about how nice it would be if time just stopped. Miss Kwan, why are you doing all of this? Huh? Building a hot spring in a student's house, hiring private bodyguards to do your bidding. None of it makes any sense. It's all just so weird. It's making it hard for me to sleep. Are you asking me about this thing specifically? Or do you want to know more about who I am? Uh, both would be nice, I thought. If you're asking about this thing specifically, the answer is because I want to protect others. Protect others? From what? And if you're asking about who I am, didn't I already go over that with your, you kids at the start of the year? Well, uh, I was previously but a humble civil servant for a certain large corporation, but then worked my way up to CEO and realized they could make my dream of becoming a teacher a reality. So she's a CEO then. I guess it explains how she's able to afford all this crazy stuff. Does your corporation produce the fruit milk I was drinking earlier too? The label said it was Niwa flavored, which I might add is kind of, um, yes, that's one of our products. It's my breast milk. I made it for kids like Yuka who can't decide whether they want yogurt, plain milk, fruit milk, or coffee milk. Now they don't have to decide, they can enjoy every flavour at once. Okay. Now, is that enough information to sate your curiosity? <laughs> I can understand where Miss Gorn is coming from, I guess, but her approach is just way too haphazard. Her ideas are well intentioned, but to go far beyond all notions of good sense. I scratch my head. What's wrong? Nothing. I was just thinking about your curry. My curry? She seemed genuinely confused. I guess to her, the idea of feeding me pre-chewed curry was just another stroke of brilliance, maybe. Not at all, something that might keep a poor high school student boy like myself up at night. Actually, how old is Miss Corn anyway? I really wanted to know, but couldn't bring myself to ask something so rude of a lady, even if I was sure she wouldn't have minded. 
The more I thought about it, though, the more intrigued I was by this enigma, I began shiftily turning my gaze towards her in short intervals, examining her body for clues. Her face had the texture and hue of a woman in her early 20s, but her body was another story. All of her skin was smooth and beautifully toned as that of her face, but there was so little behind it, ribs fully exposed in every detail. Even down towards her abdomen, I could make out round indentations where her internal organs were practically jutting out. There was no muscle, no fat, just skin and bones, literally, and that's pretty gross. Her proportions just didn't match up with one another. She was like a construct built out of spare parts. I felt almost as if the person soaking before me weren't even entirely human. Huh? Miss Kwan suddenly let out a mischievous giggle. Crap, did you catch me staring? Uh, what is it? I was just reminiscing about my first day as an assistant teacher for your class. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. My memory there was obviously a lot different from hers. Kwan Niwa wasn't even a part of it. The TA who showed up that day in my mind was, and always would be, Yui Shishido. I can still vividly remember her tripping on the step up to the teacher's desk and tearing her skirt. She had to hold the rear of it together with a safety pin for the entire day. And even though we were now living in different reality, a world without Miss Yui, Shinohara, Shizumoto, or Morishigi, we had no memories of the alternate events from this existence. I love you. What? <laughs> Excuse me? I'm in love, Satoshi. My mind went completely blank. My eyes were swimming in my head and I couldn't even see straight from the heat of the water. I have had to have misunderstood her. With what? Miss Kwan smiled widely, her cheeks looking rosy red hue. But only for a split second. Then she went back to looking wistful again. Pangs of undue guilt and dread began to well up inside of me. I knew what the next word out of her mouth was going to be. You. Miss Kwan was almost like a mass of innocence as she spoke that single word. Her eyes locked onto mine and froze them solid. I couldn't look away. Come on, stop messing with me. When you're done with your soak, please go straight home, okay? Also, you're very close. I was dumbfounded. I immediately very quickly got out of the bath and was headed for the dressing room. This was all just too, too weird. I looked back at Miss Kwan and unsurprisingly she seemed almost deflated. She was looking down at the water in a state of utter dejection. I turned to face her, still feeling a strange mix of guilt and awkwardness, but allowing the guilt to dominate for a moment. Miss Kwan? I'm not messing with you. After saying this, she closed her eyes and turned bright red, and I was pretty sure it, was from, it wasn't from the heat. Despite her physique, she seemed like a schoolgirl in that moment. I began to waver in my convictions. I felt like I had to justify not returning her sentiment. But I, I don't know anything about you. She twitched a little at this. Had I gone too far? Was I supposed to know more about her in this reality than I actually did? After the longest few seconds in recent memory, her head drooped and looked of absolute sadness washed over her face. I'd never seen anything, seen her like this before. Crap. I didn't mean to hurt her. She had to have known that. But what she didn't know, or what I couldn't really explain, was I'd only been part of this reality for a very, very short time now, so I genuinely didn't know anything about her. I tried to think of a way to convey this to her, but my mind kept drawing blanks. It was all just too absurd, absurd too fantastical, too implausible. Miss Kwan, I... No, it's alright. I'm sorry to have sprung that on you. She slowly turned her back to me. Part of me was relieved by her acceptance, I guess. But another part of me was still absolutely riddled with guilt. There was a moment of silence, and then Miss Kwan's white waterproof wristwatch broke it with a sudden loud beep. Ah. All the sadness in her expression gave way to surprise as the numbers on the watch's display, which I realise now hadn't changed this whole time, began counting down. I felt almost as if I'd been saved by the bell, so to speak, and forced a small laugh, hoping this interruption might help move the topic away from me. Miss Kwan, what kind of watch is that? Is it measuring something? She smiled. It's part of my research. The timer had stopped, but it's on the move again now. A timer? Oh, is this the research for your company? It is. There was something about this smile of hers that was strangely haunting. It would come to leave a lasting impression on me. Well, I think it's about time I head home. I took the day off today, but rest assured, I'll be back at school tomorrow. See you then! Um, Miss Kwan? I just wanted to say thanks to you. Naomi and Yuka seem a lot happier now. <laughs> I'm so glad. I think the same can be said for me, Yoshiki, and Shinazaki, so thank you. Thank you for healing my friends. Wounds in this strange new world. Is what I was trying to convey, and somewhere deep down, 
I think the sentiment got three. I'm pleased to hear you say that, and I want to thank you as well, Satoshi. With that, she slowly and meticulously waded her way to the edge of the spring. Whoopsie daisy. At which point she stepped out of the water directly in front of me. You really need to cover yourself, please. Oh, I'm sorry. That was awkward as fuck, that whole scene, wasn't it? I really wish there was a save point, but this seems to be a non-stop visual novel point at the moment. Oh shit. So I have spawned back. That ghost is probably going to kill me, right? Well, at least find me. I want to go back to the gym. <sighs> I guess it gave up. I need to get back in that gym, but the problem is... I check all these classrooms. I need to find a fucking talisman so I can kill that fucking spirit. It's like right in the most awkward place. And then I need to save my game too. That'd be fuck. Oh, for fuck's sake, really. You fucking joking me? I really need to save my game so bad. I don't want to die. Wish me luck. I'm going to try and run into... I don't know if she's going to chase me into here, but I hope not. Of course they are. Of course they are. That's what I wanted. I knew there'd be something in here. They're probably going to grab me whatever happens, but my darkening isn't particularly high right now, I don't think. If I can get down to the thing, I can avoid them. I knew because basically I missed a crowbar earlier as well. Um, please, 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 please. Hide, 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 hide. I think we got away. Fucking guy, sir, pain in the ass. We haven't been this way yet, so let's go this way. Oh, crowbar? I have a crowbar, right? Yeah, I do. I went back and got it. This was in the tree room. Fantastic! We made some good progress there, I think. Um, I really hope we find a save point soon, though. Oh, there's one there. But there's a cutscene. This way, over here, Kishinuma. Hold on, don't go by yourself. We're almost there. We're almost there, everybody. Hey, is this really where it is? No doubt about it. See, the charm's reacting. Okay, we found another pillar, but we're not going to be doing that pillar in this video. That's for fucking sure and certain. But this is the locker room. Same old showers as last time, and same old cubbies too. Just as creepy as ever. Those cupboards are particularly creepy. I really hope we don't have to go digging around inside them. Bet we do, but we're going to save her first, and that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Corpse Party Blood Drive, guys. If you did, leave a like and let me know what you think of the game so far in the comments. I guess I'll see you really fucking soon. Have a great day. Bye for now.